Welcome to the Harper Classroom. I'm Dr. Harper. This lecture video will be on the introduction to project integration management. From the 10 project management knowledge areas from the PMBOK guide, this lecture video will be an introduction to the project integration management. Project integration management involves coordinating all of the other project management processes and knowledge areas throughout a project's life cycle. There are six major processes. We will look at processes 1, 2, 5, and 6. Let's start with Project Charter. The Project Charter is a document, a verbal commitment, or an act that authorizes the project to begin, initiates the project, or provides overview of the project. The Charter must be sufficient for development of subsequent documents. So the Charter initiates the project but it must contain enough information to direct the scope statement which defines the project and the work breakdown structure, the WBS, that identifies the work to be done. The format varies, but a charter could include the following entries, title and date, where the date is the start date and the finish date, project manager or PM, project description or SOW, which is statement of work, project objectives and deliverables, and project approach which could be a process, or identifying departmental authority, key stakeholders, and sign-off section, where the sign-off section could be authorizing the initiation of the project or formally recognizing and finalizing the charter, and comments, items not necessarily part of the charter but related to the project. Charter development, enterprise environmental factors. This could contain environmental constraints or regulations that require compliance. Business case. This will help identify the contribution of the project to the organization. Organizational process assets. These are internal assets that help support the project execution, direct the project, or define the project. SLA, or service level agreement. These could identify project requirements. SOW, statement of work. This can describe the details of deliverables. So some of these, or all of these, could be part of the charter. Project derivatives. Even though the enterprise environmental factors and organizational process assets are inputs to a project, a project output should enhance and contribute to the factors and assets. To illustrate a charter, consider the event case example. The following is a description of the event we will use. The business school will conduct its annual Dean's Opportunity Breakfast on the morning of May 21st on the main campus for local area high school students. The event will be catered and include a guest speaker. The event focuses on encouraging minority and disadvantaged high school students to pursue higher education. The students are identified and invited from local area high schools. They will be transported by bus from their high schools to the event and back to their high schools. Material and related events are provided to inform and, and encourage the students and counselors to consider the business school. Student and counselor follow-up will be conducted by the staff of the business school. Now, even though this is a description, there's enough information here to consider a project charter. Here's an example of a project charter. We have the title, we have a, the date, which is the start date and the finish date, the project manager, and a project description, which briefly describes who, where, what's being done, the objectives, which is explaining why it's being done, and the value and deliverables, which will identify the expectations from this project and the definition of success. Project approach. In this case, it's the business school will conduct the planning execution, its institutional responsibility, key stakeholders to identify who's going to be directing it, and comments. For this event, business students are invited to attend and participate. Information needed for this event should be coordinated through the program director as the primary contact. The next process is the project plan. The project plan is the primary document that coordinates all the work within a project and represents the project to outside constituents. The project plan is the primary document for a project that contains the detailed work. Within a project, all of the resources are not necessarily used on every project but those that are appropriate for the project, project manager, and project team will be selected. 
but if they are selected, they go into the project plan. The format of a project plan will depend on the type of project, organization, and project team, but categories include plans from all the knowledge areas, scope plan, time plan, which is schedule, cost plan, which is budget, quality plan, human resources, communications risk, and procurement. Each of these will have a plan. All that would go into the project plan. Baselines. Scope, time, cost are examples of baselines, which can change as it goes through integrated change control. And logs and traceability matrices. Logs are documented communications, and traceability matrices are identifying progress, risks, and responses. The project plan could also include an overview, also called the introduction, executive summary, or description. It could also include organization, a statement containing the important information about the environment and context of the project, such as crucial constraints, important frames like political frames and social frames within the organization, and important stakeholders. Processes. Often it describes the technical approach taken to complete the project. Background. History that's important for the project and comments. Information outside the scope of the project, but related to the project. So the plan could include all of these or some of these, those that are important. Next, let's look at integrated change control. Integrated change control is based on expect change and plan for change. The key elements of integrated change control change processes and change control board. But I want to emphasize these key elements because respect for the two mandates, expect change and plan for change, necessarily require adequate attention given to the key elements, the change processes and change control board. Change processes must be defined, communicated, and followed due to the unique nature of projects and the dependency on finite time of a project. The Change Control Board, as the decision-making body for change, is responsible for the strict implementation of these processes. Consider the four processes in an integrated change control, identification, evaluation, implementation, verification. Let's start with identification and evaluation, again with the Change Control Board. They decide the source of changes who requests the change, how are they requested, where are they requested, to whom are they requested, and when are they requested. An analysis of changes. Focusing on the project impact statement on importance and feasibility of change. So the identification evaluation, which lies with the change control board, is analyzing changes based on project impact. If change is accepted, then we have implementation and verification which includes change management and configuration management. Within this, we have implementation of changes. How are they implemented, when, and by whom? But more importantly, verification of changes. Did the change actually occur? And if so, what are the lessons learned? How effective was it? All of this is part of change management and configuration management. If the change is rejected, then you can either modify the change or totally discard the change. Further, when the change is accepted, you can have unplanned acceptance, that is, changes due to regulatory, policy, or acts of nature that's unexpected or unplanned, or planned, changes to improve project process or project product, or required changes, administrative decision outside of the project, or secondary changes due to implementing other changes when changes are made in one part of the project, that could require a change in another part of the project. If a change is rejected, change rejection considers the value to the project. If it's unimportant, the change does not really increase the value of a project. It may be important, but it may not be feasible. The change does not produce a positive cost-benefit analysis. So let's look at the process close project. Close project. Attain adequate and complete closure of project operations, which include internal, external, and the important and sometimes overlooked lessons learned. But I want to emphasize the difference between project completed and project terminated. Often, a project is deemed completed, but the project is not terminated. 
if portions of the internal, external, and lessons learned are left undone. So, the process of closed project refers to the complete termination of a project, and not just a partial termination where the project deliverables are completed, but the internal, external, and lessons learned have not been totally finalized. Internal. Administrative, once work is validated within all plans and scope is verified with all stakeholders, then the project completion is documented and communicated. Deliverables, transfer from project to the organization. Handing off project deliverables, integrating project results into operations or passing on to project assets. Resources, release of organizational resources which can include facilities, equipment, and employees. External. Procurement. Once outsourced work is completed and the transfer of payments are recognized, then acquire the formal end of contracts. And that may include administrative sign-off or legal. Stakeholders. Verify scope with all external stakeholders. Communications. Announce or report the close of the project to all stakeholders. And sometimes that communication is two-way. Make sure the communication is received. Lessons learned. Assets. Update organizational assets learned from the project. And this could include processes, procedures, technology, or lessons learned from changes within the project. Stakeholders. Update information in the stakeholder profile. And this is for future projects. And finally, but most importantly, motivation. Review positive elements of the project to encourage and negative elements of the project to improve. Whether you have success or failure, make sure that you motivate future projects with your team, with your team members, and with your administration. So this ends the lecture video, Introduction to Project Integration Management. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.